I thought I was doing the right thing by her, like shaping a dog that would be socialized and yeah. know, calm around people. And I watched her behavior get worse week after week. The difference between success and not is that fear that you're having. Morally, I'm okay with making her uncomfortable for a split second so that I can see her behavior improve and not wait till she's like 10 Correct. to be able to do anything with her. Like that's yes. not fair to her. I want her to like improve my life. So what's going on with Sunny? I originally was working with severe human and dog reactivity. I've been working with her a lot over the past few months to try and like figure out what works for her. I've had two trainers before. I got a trainer when I got her as a puppy. I didn't know the four quadrants back then, but it was a positive only trainer. Yeah. And they just taught us basic obedience. And like the biggest thing I wanted to do was socialize her so I could bring her everywhere. They stressed, you know, bring her everywhere and have her meet people and dogs and have people give her treats. And logically to me, that sounded like, you know, of course she's gonna like people who give her treats, but we had no structure in the home. And she, I didn't know this about boxers, but you know, they're super sensitive, really excitable. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. what was happening was, you know, we moved into a dog friendly apartment and when she got bigger, you know, people stopped asking to pet her and then she got frustrated. Was it like an age thing? She hit a certain age and she- Yeah, she, it was about a year, um, a year, a year and a half, where every day it was like a CIA mission to take her out. I contacted the original trainer saying, my dog's lunging at everything, I have no idea. And then we have people over and they throw her ball one time and she's your best friend. Like, what's going on? And he essentially said, you know, put her in a sit and then, you know, give her food when she sees someone. And I remember there's this guy who, either was scared of Sunny or scared of dogs in general. And he was walking by and I did this. I put her in a sit and I offered her food and she lunged at the guy. And like, I didn't know what her intentions were. So I thought, you know, she's gonna bite someone. I'm gonna get her taken away from me or kicked out of this apartment. We like ended up spending thousands of dollars to get out of our lease. Mm. And like we ended up getting a house, which was very fortunate, but like that yeah. didn't fix anything. So Sunny, obviously being a boxer, has lots of energy, lots of excitement. There's a lot going on. So she's already been working on uh, some things with another trainer. She's already been working by herself really well with obedience, but she's still struggling with severe reactivity when they're outside. This dog is explosive. This dog is redirective on the leash. Now she's a very sweet dog to people and she's pretty sweet to other dogs when she gets to know them. It's the leash reactivity that they're still struggling with. So this video is gonna be a great foundational blueprint from the bottom to the top on exactly how to fix or solve and figure out why dogs react and how to be successful in the future. Let's test her out with a couple different things. I'm gonna grab one of the fake dogs. You know, keep her in a heel, so keep her tight. Tight meaning like not necessarily on the leash, but keeping her close to you. Yeah. Uh, and I wanna see how she reacts to the fake dog uh, just as a, as a distraction. Good heel. Her hackles are going up. Yeah, she's a little nervous. Sunny heel. So that's where like the restriction happens with the, with the uh, slip. Come on. Heel. When you get the distraction, she's very like on the edge of the leash. So you, heel. good heel, come on, good girl. Yeah, that's another thing, like I don't, good. heel. I don't know how much hang time to give yeah. her. Come on, good girl, yeah, and she's gonna work better for you, but you wanna give her a little bit of hang time, but not enough to react and to build, and not enough yeah. to pull through the leash. Okay, break. So I want you to work on that. Heel. Yeah, there you go. That little like hang time that she did there is, is where you pop just to get her in line. But she's only looking, right? Yeah, but she's also, st she's not going with you though. So okay. if she was turning and she did this, be, you wouldn't do anything. Okay. But what she's actually doing is she's looking, she's stopping, and then that's where you would pop her forward. Heel. There, yep, good. So you felt that hang time there? Yeah. Yay, Sonny, you're doing it. <laughs> it's like, yay, she's reacting. Yeah, but not so really. hold that for a second. Okay. That's where you're getting this like locked in. And this will be the same type of reaction you'll get with other people too, similarly, is like, or she locks in. Yeah. And then she might react or whatever. And in this case, she just wants to go see the fake dog. So she comes in with, I think, like an eight foot slip leash. And as you guys know, I don't care if it's a banana and an orange that helps them and their owner. I'll use whatever works. 
and the slip leash is still just not enough to really get the dog's attention. I think as she's building and building and building, the slip leash really just doesn't meet the dog where, where she needs to meet the dog to bring her down. So what we do is we switch to a Herm Springer prong collar, and what ends up happening is, is the dog gets even more frustrated with the prong, which does happen. And so essentially what happens is the dog comes out, and if we're using physical pressure to pull a dog back that is reacting based off of frustration, sometimes it can make it worse, and sometimes it can just push the dog over just a little bit more. So that's exactly what you're seeing here with Sunny. And I wanna point, point out guys, this she's already done quite a bit of obedience. The obedience looks pretty good. The problem she's having, like a lot of you guys at home, is when we're outside and we see another dog. So the slip just isn't enough. The prong collar actually makes the dog redirect, so she gets more frustrated and she snaps back. So what I'm gonna suggest, which we end up doing, is we switch to the Tom Davis Dogtra 280C, and we're gonna use the pager to start digressing and, and moving that reactivity down. As the dog builds, instead of physically correcting her and kind of making things boil over even more, we're going to use the e-collar to try to push that uh, stimulation and push that reactivity down. Fun fact about boxers I didn't realize is that they actually, I don't know if this is exactly why they got their name, but um, they box. So if you watch the way that she plays, is she'll hit like this. Yeah. See how she wants to box me? She punches what? my corner. What? <laughs> what? Are you a boxer or what? You're going to be walking, and when she reacts like that, instead of doing this, pop, 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 because this isn't su that sustainable. Yeah. You would just leave it and you just you just use the e-collar and you just hit the pager and you just keep moving. Hopefully she'll make better decisions and she won't react and then we'll pay her and then you can start introducing the e-collar with the stimulation and just kind of resetting her. It's not a long-term thing with the vibrate? It shouldn't be if it if we do it right and she if she cares about it then it won't be a long-term thing. Leave it. There you go. See? Good leave Good it. Good leave it. <laughs> Good. Good. Pop. Okay, so that one would be a leash pop, right, but no yeah. pager. You're only using the e-collar if it's getting like crazy. Like when she lunges and she goes, she commits fully. She's like, ah, I'm going. Now your leave it should have more umph behind it because you're reinforcing it nicely. Leave it. Good, Good leave, leave it. it. Good, Good girl. Good. Now the next loads, just say leave it and see if okay. it. Leave it. Good, Good leave, leave it. it. Good, Good decision. Girl. Pay her with the ball. Okay. Good. Good. There you go. Good job. Yeah. But essentially, some dogs are just so reactive and strong and powerful and explosive that yeah. some owners just can't, because you're not a professional. You know, you got you, there's a lot going on, and so it's sometimes it's really difficult. We could spend. This is what some people do. Is they're like, let's spend the next eight months on this. I'm like, or you could just use technology and see if that works. Yeah. And things that I would be looking for that I would say, okay, this isn't a good idea is if she started getting very suspicious and freaked out about everything. She didn't. She just reacted, we said leave it. She's like, whoa. And then she stopped and she's making better decisions. So her behavior is what's dictating what's happening. So if she doesn't react, that thing never turns on. If she does react, it turns on. So the timing of it is big. There's this mythical thing out there. It's like, oh, never use punishment around a dog that's reacted to other dogs because they're gonna associate. No, they're not. The dog is still right there and she's not getting corrected at all. It's the behavior that turns the correction on. I was very hesitant to use the vibrate. I was, I was saying to my husband, I was like, oh, I hope he doesn't suggest that, but I can't believe she didn't. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I and think I just... used it three times. Correct. With 10 pass -bys, Correct. You know. Modern roll collar training is so new. Back in the day, it was just compulsion. And now, obviously, there's, there's, there's change in that, which is good, a good change. Like, we're, we're making better decisions to say, Positive reinforcement in a reward-based system is necessary, but also what else was necessary is making sure the dog has boundaries and limitations when they do something wrong. And there's some training camps out there, and most of you have worked with those training camps, is they ask a dog to do something and they don't do it, they ask again. And they don't do it and they ask again. They don't do it and they ask again. Or if they misbehave and they react, run away. That's what's been so hard for me because the positive only in the beginning, like I thought I was doing the right thing by her, like, shaping a dog that would be socialized and you yeah. know, calm around people. And I watched her behavior get worse week after week. Yeah. And I was just like, what am I doing wrong? I'm doing what this person told me to do. And now, you know, with the balance training, yeah, I don't want my dog to feel uncomfortable. 
but also I'm doing this and morally, I'm okay with making her uncomfortable for a split second so that I can see her behavior improve and not wait till she's like 10 Correct. to be able to do anything with her. Like that's yes. not fair to her, it's Correct. not fair to me. Correct. I want her to like improve my life. Like you said before, I think a lot of her reactivity w comes from that training. It's because yeah. she was harnessed up and every time there were people or dogs around, we would suck her into us. So when we do like protection work or we do like police training work, that's what we do is we put them on a harness and you we- You rev them up. We, we say, okay, agitate to the bad guy. And yeah. it's, it's, and for some dogs, they love it and it's fun and it's a game and it doesn't cause any problems. But with a dog that you're actually trying to modify a behavior, it's a nightmare. So before it's like, we put a harness on her, a gentle leader, front clip, whatever. She starts to see another person and build. And instead of teaching her how to walk nicely on a leash, we hold her back. Yeah. And it creates, it compounds things and it makes things worse. To me and to you and to, and honestly, 95% of the dog population owners out there understand that. It's just there are people that are, mar are using marketing manipulation to make dog owners feel like crap. Yeah. Because it's... That's what was so hard about finding a different training style. It's like, I already felt guilty, you know, about how I thought I was doing the right thing. It's like, what if I choose wrong again? Yeah. And I'm not a professional, like, but then I see, you know, videos on Instagram or comments, like, oh my gosh, the comment section are it's brutal. You, you make, they make you feel like crap about anything you do. Yeah. So that's really, what's really hard. But then I, I keep checking back with myself, like, no, she's getting better. She seems happier. Like, this can't be wrong. Yeah, the, the proof is in the pup. If you guys like this video and you want to see the full version of this video, click the link below to join the official No Bad Dog Members Club. Yep. You little sneakster. You little sneakster. You little sneakster. Yeah. Good, leave it. Good, leave it. Because she did good, right? But I did use the. Yeah. Okay. It's still though, like. Heel. Good yes. heel. Good, good heel. Yes. Good heel. Yes. Yep. Heel. Slow down. Heel. Pop, 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 pop. Yep. Keep good. moving. Keep moving. There you go. See, you're kind of toggling between the two. Yeah. Look. Leave it. Seats. Seats. Here, let me see. Heel. Sit. No. Good. Ah, sit. Good. Good. Heel. Good girl. Good girl. Cora, touch. Leave it. Leave it. Good. Leave it. Heel. Good girl, baby. Good girl. Good girl. Heel. Good. Sit. Good sit. Stay. Touch. Uh -uh. Good touch, Marui. Good stay. So when you're handling, you're letting her get to a bad point and you're handling and she's drifting that way. Yeah. You gotta say, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. You're here, right here. This is where you are. You're not there. Cause that's where she, she ends up building and that's where it spirals out of control. I think my concern right now is like overcorrecting her, but. The difference between success and not is that fear that you're having, is you're not giving her a good correction that she's gonna learn from. It's not a strong hand thing, it's just a timing thing. Slow down, stop, good. Keep her, so she's too, too far in front of you. You want her front? Yeah, that's where you want her. You want her front legs at your heels. That's where you're gonna have leverage. There you go. Good. Heel. And see now all you need is your wrist to flick yeah. and that's going to that's going to bounce her because that lead because that collar is set up perfect. All right, you guys, we work really hard with full production 4K videos absolutely free for you guys. Do us a favor. No bad dog army. Like this video right now if you're watching it and let's make this army even stronger than it is. So now as we're starting to handle with Sunny, we're moving into the second day and we're moving into working around another dog. So she did okay with the fake dog. She did okay with Lakota, but now we're gonna bring one of the other out of states in, the big, big St. Bernard, and we're gonna see what happens. Ready? So we're gonna heal, you're gonna go right here to the, and I'm gonna go that way. 
Okay. My bad. Heel. Sunny heel. Ah, good. Good. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Sit. Sit. Good sit. Ah, heel. Sit. Go ahead. Heel. Heel. Good. Good catch. Good. Let's do it again. That was good. So we're going to slow down and we're going to stop. Go ahead and stop. Put your doggies into a sit. 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 A little good bit of pressure. Sit. And then you hang out right there just like that. Mm. Go ahead. Sunny heel. Heel. Good. Leave it. Good. Leave good it. Good heel. Good girl. This is like crazy to me. <laughs> good. It's good. It's yeah. good crazy. Yeah. Hi, baby. Hey, you guys, we're doing a giveaway on the Tom Davis Dog Tour 280C on this video. All you have to do to enter to win is subscribe to my channel, turn on your notification, like this video, and leave a comment down below to enter to win. I had a question about mm -hmm. the vibrate. So I know that we were talking about she was getting frustrated with like the physical correction yeah. with the prong, and that's you know associated with me correcting her. Yeah. But the leave it, even when I use the vibrate, and I'm saying leave it as I vibrate. How is the vibrate not associated with me? What is associated it, with my command? But why are you saying the command? Because I want to interrupt her behavior. Right, so the behavior is what turns it on. But so then the, how is that different from the behavior turning on the leash correction? Because one of them's physical and one of them's digital, if you will. Okay. Yeah, so like <clears throat> it would be the difference if I was like pushing you and you're like, you're upset over here and I'm pushing you yeah. and I'm pushing you. You're like, dude, stop, yeah. you're freaking me out. Versus like, like your cell phone ringing constantly and you're like, this is annoying. So like she doesn't know that. She does know. It's, it's coming just, from me. It, do, it does know, she does, she will know over time. Okay. But the difference is, is like when she starts Cause she to, wasn't getting frustrated. That's like. What do you mean? She wasn't getting frustrated by the vibrate, but she was right. getting frustrated by the. Cause one of them is physical and one okay. of them is electronic. But when she does associate the electronic with me, do you think frustration? No, will... because it's not. It's not. It's not the. It's not you that's frustrating her. It's the actual, physically, grabbing her and 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 doing this okay. with her. Like you're you're physically, doing okay. that. So I want you to just take advantage of what these guys are doing over here, okay. um, and and you and because we have such big space, you can do what you want. Just work around. Okay. So as we bring her into reality, she used the pager once. And if you guys remember on the first day that we started using the pager, she had to use it several times to kind of help the dog figure out what's going on. And now she was in reality with tons of other dogs. There was a great Dane walking by and as the dog started to load, the timing of the dog owner, the timing of the handler was perfect. The dog started to load and right before she kind of went off on her boxer little freak out is we use the pager, discourage that behavior. She immediately disengaged and, she, and then she, she, she walked away. It diffused the situation, it dismembered the situation in a sense of just taking everything away and said, hey, we're not doing this. And it was absolutely perfect. So we use the pager in the beginning to help modify the perception of how she should act around other dogs. And today we proved exactly if it's going to work or it's not sustainably in reality. And of course it did. I'm very proud of these guys. I think they're gonna be very successful moving forward. I didn't know, you know, what tools to use for her, why she wasn't responding to, you know, different methods I was using. I wasn't expecting her when she got here to be like super fearful because she's so explosive as a boxer. But Tom really got her out of her shell, was playing with her, so that was really nice to see. He really helped me just like fine tune which tools are gonna work for her because she was getting so frustrated with me. I feel like I have a really good set of tools moving forward because I love this dog more than anything and I just want her to have the best life and I feel like I really have um, like the tool. Sit. Okay. Um, <laughs> she didn't react. Okay. Yeah. So there's the dog over there and Sunny usually would just explode and alligator fishtail everywhere. Um, but she's in a sit and there's a dog over there too. Like this is crazy for me. Um, she hasn't been this close to other dogs on leash. Um, since she was probably a year old. She's three now.